Statistics is awesome because we can talk about randomness in predictable ways. I'm Lord Thunderpork, and today I'd like to explore the statistical randomness of Minecraft. Let's investigate the dropper. This simple block can be used to create complex behavior. Let's dive in. Droppers are a Minecraft block that drop an item from one of nine inventory slots when powered by redstone. For example, the press of a button. If we put different items in its inventory slots, we notice that the dropper doesn't always output the same item. However, pressing the button for a long enough time drops approximately the same number of items. That's interesting, right? Even though we're not sure exactly what item will be dropped next, over a long enough time, we get approximately the same number of items as the number of button presses increases. This appears to hold true even when we change the locations of the number of items in the dropper, or when we double or triple the number of items in the dropper. Let's write down what we've noticed. When a dropper has two items in the same number of slots, in the long term it tends to output an equal count of each item. So, the probability of seeing yellow wool when a dropper has a stack of yellow and a stack of blue is the number of yellow wool that we got out divided by the number of both kinds of wool that we got out, or approximately one half. We call this distribution uniformly at random. So let's test this theory. If we add a third color, we're expecting to see approximately one third of the wool dropped to be yellow. Let's try that. Droppers drop uniformly at random for each item slot. But let's try an experiment. What happens if we have three stacks of one color, two stacks of another color, and one stack of a third color? What distribution do we expect to be spit out by the dropper? We're going to see a number of wool proportional to the number of stacks inserted. For example, we had three blue stacks, so we're expecting roughly half the wool to be blue, because it's uniform at random. In contrast, yellow we're expecting about one stack, relative, or one sixth relative to the others, because there was one of six stacks in the beginning. That's what we see. All of these have roughly 50 stacks each of wool spit out by the dispenser. Nice. So it certainly seems like droppers dispense items uniformly at random. Droppers are interesting. We don't know exactly which color they'll spit out next, but in the long term, over many drops, we can be approximately sure what the distribution will look like. What if we tried combining droppers? To connect our droppers, let's use this system. Every time we press a button on this end, the signal comes into this dropper and outputs one of these items, yellow or blue, such that one of these lines, yellow or blue, is triggered. Blue was output, and the blue line triggers. This system means that this blue line could then activate another dropper system, each with two outputs, so that we can chain them in an interesting way. Let's try doing exactly that, chaining each output. Now that we've put these droppers into series, let's see what happens after a few button presses. So, it appears that our droppers in parallel in this way, where one splits into two, two split into four, four split into eight. This results in the probabilities being equal at the end, whereas our individual atomic dropper units have a probability of one half for each outcome. At the next level, we have a probability of one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. And at the final level, we have all one eighths probability. I like to call this dropper sequence in parallel because the connections look like they're parallel to each other. A branch, once it branches, can never return to a previous branch. They must always split and run parallel to each other forever. 
But what happens if we connected these dropper units in series, where branches could intersect again? Let's try that now and see what happens. I know what you're thinking. It's sure a lot more complicated than the last one. And what's that magenta wool doing there? Well, I'll tell you. The magenta wool is there exactly to bridge the gap between the two branches. Because we decided that, in contrast to the completely parallel one, where branches can never meet again, and they get perpetually further and further away from each other, what if here, adjacent branches could actually meet again? And that's what this magenta is doing. So when we receive an output, let's say from this yellow line, and it goes into its blue line, then it goes back to the middle. So we get this pattern of middle, side, middle. If it goes into blue originally, it can also come back to the middle. So we get the reflected middle, side, middle pattern. You can kind of think of this as if we had a pegboard where every white dropper circuit was a peg, and we were bouncing a ball that could land either on the left or on the right with equal probability. And we're seeing where the ball ends up overall. Now these columns of sand, or concrete powder I should say, will be pushed every time that the signal reaches one of these eight lamps and pistons at the end. And we're using sand or concrete powder here because we want to track in aggregate what does the distribution look like. So instead of just tracking one lamp at a time, we can see over many button pushes which columns of sand will fall more than others, if at all, or whether they'll fall roughly equally, like we expect that one will do. Let's see that now. Is that what you expected? It's kind of interesting, right? This is a very smooth looking curve. It starts shallow, then gets steeper, then shallows out, and then it's symmetric. And it came from a bunch of droppers with one half probability. The probability of going left or right was exactly the same. So why did we get this shape here, but not with that machine? It must be due to the connections, right? The probability of going half that way and one half that way means that the most likely position to end up from bouncing there and back, there and back, there and back is somewhere in the middle. Thinking about it another way, when we were looking at the lamps, you had to get the yellow branch, then the yellow branch, then the yellow, 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 every single time in order to drop one of these outermost ones. There's only one way to get a yellow to drop on the way, all the way on the outside. Same with the blue. You had to take the blue branch every single time in order to drop one of these. But in the middle, there are many paths that all lead to dropping a middle. That's why we saw it so much more frequently. This distribution is something called the normal distribution, or the Gaussian, and it appears a lot in nature, in all kinds of unexpected places. We can model the distribution of human heights, other phenomena occurring in nature, as a normal distribution, and get pretty far. Let's try one more experiment. What happens if we change the probability in each of these to make yellow twice as likely as blue? What will the distribution look like in that case? Isn't that something? Our new distribution also has this normal curve shape, but yet it's skewed to the side. At the same time, it's really interesting at first thought that this all yellow branch isn't the most common. Why is that? Didn't we say that there's two yellow for every one blue? Well, it turns out that all yellow is still not the most common path. There, are, there is still only one way get all the way down to the all yellows. But there is more than one way to get to these ones. And so it seems that the middle paths are still slightly more common, though skewed to the side with the yellow distribution. On the other hand, the blue side is much less likely. And so every time it has to pick, there's only a one third chance that the dropper will pick the blue wool. 
So it's not that surprising that for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different selections, we never even saw one of this column drop. To summarize what we've discovered, when we allow non exclusive branching such that between two choices, there is a possibility to return back to the other side, we get this interesting, smooth, normally distributed curve. And we even get that curve when we change the probability of switching branches back. So when it was equal, we had the white curve that was centered. And when it was unequal in favor of yellow, we had the slightly shifted yellow curve, but it still resembled the normal distribution. For the sake of comparison, let's run the same experiments, but using the parallel branching system. Branches cannot intersect, they're distinct the whole way through, and we're going to use equal probability with white concrete and two thirds to one third probability with yellow concrete. Let's give it a whirl. And just like that, we've got a uniform at random distribution. There's a little bit of noise, side to side variation, but for the most part, it's equal. There's no discernible pattern, just random noise above a certain height. But what if we update the probability to make a yellow twice as likely as blue, like we did in the last one? What do you think will happen? Find out now. There we have it, four distributions with two different probabilities and two different kinds of chaining. One with dependency on previous results and one with independent coin flips. White with an equal probability of flipping heads and tails and yellow with one third probability heads, two thirds tails. What do we notice? When leaning in the yellow direction, the distributions skew in that direction too. The probabilities that tend more towards yellow will result in distributions more towards yellow. At the same time, because there's randomness involved, it's not totally predictable. Check out this uniform yellow distribution. It's sort of a straight line, but then there's one dramatic dip. Or with this normal distribution, it's sort of normal looking, but that one spike is kind of suspicious. Statistics is amazing because even if on an individual single dispenser flip level. We don't know what the outcome will be. In aggregate, we can discuss it with more certainty. Thanks for tuning in and watching my Summer of Math Exposition 3 video. This is going to be episode one of a series I might do, depending on interest. If you enjoy statistical Minecraft, stick around. Until next time. <music>